Welcome to the NobleWorks Learning Center. In this video, we will demonstrate how to add Level 4 tagging to the tables located inside the NOSTA financial statements. Level 4 tagging, also known as detailed tagging, involves tagging numerical data within the NOSTA financial statements to create XPRL facts. Numerical data can be located inside tables or within the narrative text of the note. In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to tag the data within the tables. Each table within the NOSTA financial statements is going to be slightly different. Unlike the face financial statements in a filing, tables within the NOSTA financials vary in structure and content. Even a simple table, like a PP&E table, can be structured differently depending on each unique filer. So the goal of this tutorial is to discuss the approach to take for certain kinds of tables and discuss the tools that you would use for a few samples. We'll have more practical examples in another tutorial. To start, the first step in tagging a table will be to identify what each structural component of the table represents in XPRL terms. XPRL facts are created at the intersection of an XPRL element and a context. Contexts represent a moment in time or a period of time, but can have additional components that are represented by XPRL dimensional elements and members. These additional components might be a legal entity or a component of an accounting concept like equity, or any number of other items. So these are the major things we need to look for when analyzing each table. XPRL line item elements, dates and periods of time, and XPRL member elements. Being able to distinguish between XPRL line item elements and XPRL member elements requires a knowledge of the U.S. GAAP taxonomy and the type of data you're tagging. There are some useful resources out there that can help you learn more about the taxonomy and to explore the taxonomy. There are some links available here and also in the description of the video. You can also use the XPRL Taxonomy Viewer and the XPRL Element Library tool in GoFiler to explore the taxonomy. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're not going to go into much depth about how to distinguish between member elements and line item elements. I'll show a little bit of the taxonomy for one of the tables to demonstrate how you can use the library to explore the taxonomy, but learning the ins and outs of the U.S. GAAP taxonomy is beyond the scope of these tutorials. To correspond with the three major XPRL components, we have three types of tools in GoFiler. You can mark table components with elements, dimensions, and contexts. Let's take a quick look at the specific tools. For columns, there is the Mark Column with Element, Mark Column with Context, and Mark Column with Dimension functions. The Mark Column with Element function will mark a table column with an XBRO line item element. This is used when a column has no date information and when the rows in the table are marked with a context. We'll talk more about the second part when we get to the row tools. The Mark Column with Context function will mark a table column with an XPRL context. The context can specify a point in time or a period of time, as well as dimensions and member elements. You can specify more than one dimension member combination as well. This is used when a column has date information or represents data for a component of a larger concept with date information. The Mark Column with Dimension function will mark the table column with an XPRL member element. This is used when a column represents the data for a component of a larger concept but has no date information. There are some rare instances where a column represents other XPRL information. For example, a column might represent children of an abstract line item element or data of a different type such as shares. If that is the case, you can always fall back to the mark block fact function, which we'll cover later in this tutorial. Before we do that, let's go over the row functions. For rows, there are the mark row with element, the mark row with context, and the mark row with date functions. The mark row with element function marks a row with an XPRL line item element. This is used when the row represents an XPRL concept with no other information. The mark row with context function marks a row with an XPRL context. Like the mark column with context function, the context can specify a point in time or a period of time, 
as well as dimension and member elements. You can specify more than one dimension member combination. This is used when a row has date information or represents data of a component of a larger concept with date information. Finally, there is the mark row with date function. This function is used to mark a row that has date information in it. It can be used for rows that only contain date information as well as for rows that contain date information and represent the next bureau concept. For example, you would use this function for rows that represent a balance at a particular date. Whenever a row n-gram and column n-gram intersect, a fact will be created, provided that one of the n-grams specifies an exprial line item element and the other specifies a context, and there is properly formatted data in the cell. Now that we've talked about the major exprial components and the tools we have to designate table items as these components, let's take a look at how to combine this information. Because HTML tables have two axes, and there are only three major components in XPRIL presentations, there are a finite number of configurations for the HTML. We'll take a look at the tables here, discuss the tools we would use, and then we'll head into GoFiler to demonstrate practical applications. Here's a simple example. This is arguably the most common configuration you would see for a table. The rows of this table correspond to line item elements. The columns of this table correspond to dates or periods of time. Rows that represent line items use the Mark Row with Element tool. Columns that represent date information use the Mark Column with Context tool. This table shows a variation of the first. You have rows that represent line items. However, the columns have date information and also represent a component of a larger concept. This table would use the Mark Row with Element and Mark Column with Context tool as well. However, in the Mark Column with Context function, you would specify the dimension member combination for each column as well as the date. Let's look at a table with a different structure. Here's another example where rows contain both date and line item information. The columns represent another concept, which is usually a component of a larger concept and corresponds to XPRL members. This type of table is sometimes called a roll forward or roll up when discussing XPRL reporting. This table would use mark row with date for the first row and for each row that indicates the beginning of a new duration in time. If that row has data in it, you would use the Mark Row with Date tool to specify the XPRL element that row represents as well. Because you're going to use an instant element in conjunction with a period of time, you would use the options in the tool that specify whether the balance is at the beginning or the end of the period. The second date for the duration would use the Mark Row with Element tool. We don't need to specify a duration of time again, but we would use the tool to indicate that it is the end of the period. The Mark Row with Element tool will also be used for the remaining rows. So Mark Row with Date is used for the first row of each period. Mark Row with Element is used for each line item row in between. For rows that use instant concepts within the period, you would use the Mark Row with Element tool to specify whether the fact applies to the beginning or end of that period. The columns would use the Mark Column with Dimension function. This function specifies the dimension member combination for each column. For these types of tables, the software will automatically create a context using the period between the dates listed in the rows. That period will be used to create the facts for the rows between the two dates. The final type of table we can tag with these tools is a transpose table. This is a table where the context information is contained in the rows of the table and the element information is contained in the columns. For this type of table, we would use the Mark Row with Context tool and the Mark Column with Element tool. These are only some of the examples of table structures you might find in your Notes to Financial section. These are the types of tables that can be tagged using the table tagging tools. However, you will encounter tables that don't fit these tools, and, for that, the software has another blanket tool that can tag data in any type of table the Block Fact tool. This function adds an n-gram to a single HTML block, like a table cell.
With it, you specify the element, the context, and any dimension and members that may apply to the data. Because it tags the cell, you don't have to worry about the structure of your table. You're directly tagging each fact with the XPRL information. Let's take a look at some of the samples where you would use the Block Fact tool. Here's a pretty common table setup that you might see in a report. This is a table where the combination of the text in the rows and the text in the columns represent an XPRL concept. This table can look like a dimensional table. It has date information in the columns and text that looks similar to the label for a member. But if you're familiar with the taxonomy, you'll be able to recognize that this table does not use an access element. Each cell in this table represents its own XPRL element. We can't mark the rows as an element because the first column uses one element and the second column uses another. So for this example, you would use the Mark Block Fact tool for each of the data cells. Here is another example. This is another table that, at first glance, looks as if it would be a good candidate for using the Mark Row with Element and Mark Column with Context. However, you can see that many of these rows represent data that use different domain members. We have two rows representing the same line item for different business segments, as well as other rows that use additional members because they are totals or eliminations. Some items have no member elements at all. Because each of these cells uses different member elements, it would be impossible to tag the column with a single context. The context for one cell uses a domain member that isn't necessarily the same for all. Therefore, some cells would have the correct context and others would not. For this reason, this table uses the Block Fact tool. There are a number of other layouts that require using the Block Fact tool, but to go through all of them would take hours. A simple rule of thumb would be to determine if all the data in the row or column can be represented by a single XBRL component. If you can match the structural components of the table to those XBRL components we talked about earlier, then you can use the appropriate tool in GoFiler. If you can't match the structural components of the XBRL table to the XBRL components, or if one of the rows or columns can't be represented by a specific XBRL component, such as a single element or a single context, then use the Block Fact tool. One last thing to know is that the Block Fact tool can be used within tables where columns and rows have been tagged with the Mark Row and Mark Column tools. The Row and Column mgrams will create fact data for table cells where they intersect. However, if there is a single row or column in the table that doesn't fit the pattern for the rest of the table, you can tag the cells in that one row or column with the Block Fact tool. An example of this might be a column that represents a different type of data, or a row that represents a line item concept with a different dimensional component. Let's look at another table to illustrate what we mean. So this example can use a combination of the Block Fact tool and the table tagging tools. We have a straightforward table that expresses unique XPRL line item concepts on each row with columns that contain date information. Where this table is different than the simple table are the columns showing the percentages. Each item in the percentage column uses a different concept than the amount columns. We could use the block fact function to tag this entire table, but as you can see, it has a lot of data points in it. So using only the block fact function is going to add a considerable amount of time to tagging this table. Instead, we can tag the rows with the line item elements for the amount columns. We would use mark row with element for that. Then we can tag the amount columns of the context information using the mark column with context function. We won't tag the percent columns. The facts will be created where the row engrams and the column engrams intersect. There is no column engram in the percent columns, so no facts will be created in these columns. Instead, we will create facts by tagging these columns using the Mark Block Fact tool. The Block Fact tool can be used as the primary tool for tagging tables. You can also use it as a fallback for tables when you aren't certain which tool to use. And finally, you can use it as your preferred method of tagging for all tables. It can add some time to the process because it involves tagging each individual fact, 
However, there are other tools like the copy ngram function that can help you reduce the overall time. To conclude, we have at our disposal a number of table tagging tools for the tables in the notes of financials. We can choose to tag tables by structural component by using the mark row and the mark column tools, or we can tag each discrete data point individually using the block fact function. I'm going to stop here for now. In our next tutorial, I will demonstrate these tools in our sample document, so you can get a feel for when and how to use them. Thanks for watching.